Good afternoon, everybody. Phil Brown here with JITCAD Cam. Today, I'm going to talk about gauge length and gauge line on your machine and how we can utilize Fusion and plug those numbers in to auto send tool offsets and tool lengths to the machine. That said, this only works for mill at this moment. However, given that there was a way to do this on the lathe, guys, let me know. I'm happy to help you show you how to do this. So what most people are requesting when they want a gauge length and why they're going to set this up is I'm going to go ahead and edit my tool and I'm going to show you kind of in theory how this works. Now, if you're Autodesk and you're watching this, please, by all means, can you guys add gauge length in here so that I don't have to do it the way that we do it currently? But what we're looking for is a distance of where our tool holder mates the machine to the tip of the tool, right? So that's called a gauge length. Now, the gauge line is actually in the spindle, and basically it's where if I took a tool out of one machine with a certain length offset, let's say 12 and a half inches, and I stick that into another machine, that 12 and a half inches should be identical and the only difference that's going to change is my work offset at the machine. What this allows me to do, for example, if I have three machines all cat 50, I could make this tool in particular 15, and that tool could go into any one of those machines because it's going to overwrite the controller with the length that's set to the gauge length of the tool. Now, what we're going to do here is in overall length, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the length of this tool. Now, if you have an offline presetter, if you're using a height gauge, or if you can manually set this from the machine, it's very beneficial. Now, keep in mind, this has to be a positive number. It cannot be a negative number. And if you're going to start using the gauge line method, which I do highly recommend to front load your tools while the machine is running, this will always be a positive at the controller as well as here inside of Fusion. Now, I'm going to plug in that idea of 12 and a half. So this overall length doesn't actually affect anything inside of Fusion. Granted, this is the overall length of the end mill, and we are not accounting for the tool holder itself. So just keep that in mind. But now with that 12 and a half, what we're going to do is when we post our G code, we want to populate that. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my post processor. And in this case, let's go ahead and close out the debug file because I want to run you guys through the fact that I would highly recommend installing the Fusion extension for your post if you're going to make these changes. You don't want to make these changes, feel free to reach out to me. But we're going to go back up to the Explorer and we're going to actually expand out CNC selector. I went to milling 2D and then lastly, facing. And the reason for this is, is I just need to create a debug file to do a little bit of my copy and pasting. And if you guys haven't seen my post process or edit video, that's usually what most of you need when it comes to these changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to this very first tool table area and I'm going to double click it a couple of times so that we can get to the section where it's writing this tool table. Now, the important part about this is, is we need to steal some information out of here to rewrite our line of code to create our G10. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by finding something that I know is a known value inside this comment. So, and that known value is this D. This D is the tool diameter. And I was messing with this post a little bit earlier, so we may have to fix something, which is this should actually say tool dot diameter and yours will more than likely have that. Let's go ahead and repopulate, awesome. So this is a two inch face mill and that's what we're seeing here with that diameter value. So now what I could do is I could steal this little section of code and I'm just gonna push control C on my keyboard to copy that. Now I'm gonna start by initially putting it right after the comment at the top of the page. Now it's up to you where you put it. You could also put it down here at the tool comment. I also highly recommend that. Again, every time there's a tool change, it would then call out that length offset. I just have a lot of people that like to plug it in here at the top. Again, each their own. If you put it at the top and you have to change your tool mid-cycle and you start from a point, just keep in mind it's not going to actually reference it. Again, this is why I like to put it by the tool change area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new line by hitting enter, and I'm going to do a right block. Now, the right block function is because we want to put in a block of information. We don't want to do a comment that's stuck inside of brackets. And I'm going to paste that line of code. And then I'm going to go ahead and add and end a block at the end of this line. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. And just like that, notice how we're getting a D1. It is colored. Now, it's not green. It's that teal kind of color here. And what that is doing is that is allowing you to see that we could actually write a line of code, right? We did write block. Now, let's modify this. So to start with, I do know, for example, is this isn't going to be a D value when we do our G10. It's actually going to be an R value. And again, we're going to go ahead and hit save. And as you're going to see, we just updated that D to an R, getting that first kind of segment that we need. 
Now, let's start to fill out more information here. So as you can see, again, based on a copy and paste, is we can actually take the information that we need and we can copy and paste it inside of Fusion. And as you're seeing here is I am gonna have to throw comments between these because we want each little segment here to be its own line of code. And again, if I hit save, you're looking at the R equals R equals R equals. So let's go ahead and change this up a little bit more. So first and foremost, we don't need the equal sign. So I'm actually gonna modify these as we go. But let's pull these equal signs out again, hitting control S to go ahead and save that again. What we're looking for is to create that G10 line, right? So the very first one I'm going to do is just a capital G10. Again, we hit save. And as you're noticing, we're starting to manipulate this line of code. Now for the FANUC and Haas, we're going to go ahead and call out an L10. And then our third decimal or our third place is going to be G90. And then lastly, we're going to actually need a P value here. So again, we're going to go ahead and change this to P. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And as you can see, I don't want to change the P value quite yet. We want to leave that as R. I messed that up, guys. But what we do want to add in is we do want to add in a P callout because that is going to eventually be our tool number. So again, we're going to go ahead and hit save. And as you see, we're starting to write that line of code that is going to tell the controller what we want it to put in as a work offset. Again, this is a gauge length, or not a work offset, I apologize. This is a gauge length, which is a tool length, and we're overwriting the controller. So you have to keep that in mind. So if you ever have to change that tool, you have to change it here in the G code at the end of the day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more here. So we're gonna go ahead and add a plus sign. And if this seems a little too intimidating for you guys, don't worry, feel free to copy the line of code that I have down below in the bio area and paste that into your actual Fusion 360 post. So again, as we're going to do a tool format dot format, we're going to bracket this up and we're going to grab the tool dot number. Again, closing out that bracket and chasing that with a comma. So let's go ahead and hit save one more time. And now, as you can see, tool one is now P1. Tool diameter in this case is coming out as R value. So again, instead of D equals, we have an R value here. So that's the last thing that I'm going to change here, right? So we don't actually want to use the tool diameter. I'm going to go ahead and remove the word diameter, and we're going to punch in overall length and hit save. And now what you're going to notice here is we are now getting a P1 for tool one, and we're getting a length value of 5.9. So now I am doing this right after the tool comment at the top, and I told you guys we could go ahead and show you how to add this somewhere else inside your post. So I'm actually going to take that entire line of code and copy it. And then I'm going to go to my tool comment area and I'm going to go ahead and double click. So as you can see here, we have our ability to put out that code when there's a tool call. And from here, we can go ahead and add additional information after the fact. So again, as I'm just hitting enter, pasting that in there and then hitting save. So again, as you're seeing here, we have an additional line down here calling out the same information based on what we're doing. Now, if I don't want it down here after the spindle call out, again, we could undo a couple of things here and we could go back up a row. Again, we can write our piece of information in. So we're gonna go ahead and paste that. Oh, it looks like I failed to copy that properly and paste it. So we're gonna go back up here and copy. Again, going down to the tool comment right after this initial statement. And again, we're gonna paste that in there and hitting save. So now we're calling out our tool, we have our comment, and then we have our G10 move. So let's test this out. So now that we have this all saved, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to Fusion, and let's go ahead and grab those two tools. And one thing I'm gonna do is let's turn off this pattern so we don't have a ton of extra code, and let's post this out. So posting this out is now gonna give us the ability to have that information in two locations, right? So right after my tool statement at the top, I've called out that value. And again, if you remember that half inch end mill, we did a 12 and a half. This is again for testing purposes. But as you're gonna see down here below, we also have that call out based on the actual tool path right after a tool change. So again, as we're doing that T15, which is triggering an P15, and then an R value of 12.5. And again, guys, depending on where you want it, I prefer to put it in the actual lines of code for where we're calling out that actual tool path and the tool change but that's just me. So again, if you guys wanna do this to your post processor, the line of code is down below. 
That being said, it's not what you know, it's who you know, and you guys all know myself, Phil Brown over here at JIT CAD Cam. If you would like for me to add this to your post processor, go ahead and use the email link down below to send me an email, and I'm more than happy to help you guys out. As always, have a great rest of your day.